It's another K-Town beat. YouTube, 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 it's your boy, Mr. Outline today. I got the drop fade. No enhancements on the cut at all. I really just want to focus on one side of the haircut so you can really understand the fading, the transition process. You know, you can it can be information overload sometimes, so you got to be... You know, I kind of want to slow it down and just focus on one side. A lot of times you watch videos and they got, you know, both sides of the back and all this. Hey, man, you trying to learn how to fade? You want to know technique? I'm going to slow it down and break it down, right? So, you want to make your first guideline. We already know this. Drop fade. All fades about are about where the guideline start. Right? The only difference is where your guidelines start. So on a drop fade, you want to drop the first guideline as low as possible. Now this, he got a curly top. He don't want it combed and all that. You know the new style. You know what I mean? I did some stuff when I was younger too, so I ain't knocking it. But he not trying to comb it. He want to keep it thick. You know, and I don't want to compromise the sides and what he got going on you want to fade right up into the heavy curl part right so that's what we focusing on and also i'm gonna break it down the levels and why i choose to skip guards and different type of steps now you see where i, I made that cone go through it right there right that's about what half an inch a little more whatever that's one area and right above that is the second area so we want to transition between the three areas we got the bottom where we bought it out so that's one area right that's that's one transition the next transition comes in between here so i take my one guard and it's like medium you can do close i don't suggest open just to save some time but you know this might be a little advanced but you can go medium right halfway so you do that and you go up to where we made the comb go through to show you how much, how high you should go on it, right? So we going up half an inch and we just getting that next guideline where we can see it, right? The purpose of using this one guard, because normally you wouldn't use a one guard right there. You would use no guard and come up and make a guideline. But I don't want the fade to go too high, so I'll skip my normal step right so after i use the one guard i come back with no guard and i clean up that bottom right i want that bottom line to go away now you want to work on that as much as possible you might not be able to get it to go away all the way because you just don't have enough space between you know the first guideline and the second guideline to where you can work it so Get it as close as possible, as, you know, remove as much as that bottom line as possible, but that's a second transition in between that bottom line right there and that where we made the one guard at, right? The one guard um, guideline, right? Right above that. So now what we want to do, you might want to go one and a half right here, right? But you really should go two. And you can see that I switched it to the two. So look where I'm focusing where I put the comb at. Now, I don't want to go any higher than that. And the reason I'm using the two guard because I know that the two guard would blend directly into the curl pattern that he got going up here to twist the curls. It's not going to take much off. It's going to knock the bulk off just enough for me to get it, you know, where I can see a form starting to happen where I can make the transition happen, right? So I use the two guard in order to do that. Now I come back, I got my one and a half guard, right? And I want to knock some more bulk down. Just make sure it's smooth right along that guideline. I just want to make sure it's smooth right there, right? So after doing the two and debulking, you come back with the one and a half and you debulk. So now all I'm doing is focusing really on that guideline because I got it smooth like I want. You know, I'm about to create the third transition right now it's a graduated process 
you're going to come all the way back down to the one guard, to no guard, and then finally you'll have a blend, right? So now I'm putting the one guard on, right? And I'm still working that last guideline that we made with this one guard, right? We made this guideline right here with the one guard. So now I go open to close because I want to slowly remove it. I want to see exactly what's coming off. If you're not sure about uh, what needs to come off, how much you want to come off, either start off with a bigger guard or make sure the guard that you're thinking that you should use, make sure you use it open first. If you use it open, it'll save you, you know, from mistakes and things like that. And you can gradually see you know, the hair coming off and the blend starting to happen. So me, I use the corner of the blade, right? When I'm when I'm picking spots, I'm using just the corner of the blade, right? And you can already see the transition happening. Now I don't have the guard on there. I'm still using the corner of the blade. Look what I'm doing. I'm using the corner of the blade. I'm getting it there. I'm attacking certain spots, right? I'm not trying to... Uh, you know, make another guideline. So if you lay it flat, you're gonna make another guideline. Also, you have to incorporate clipper over comb in your haircuts, especially with haircuts like this, right? You wanna incorporate clipper over comb so you can get a, a good blend. Like I say, a lot of times, the guards don't do you justice all the time. They'll get you to a certain point and then that's it you know but the thicker the hair you might have to use clip over comb and it's just going to make it that much easier for you you see me i'm still picking my spots i'm still using the corner of the blade make sure you paying attention to everything like turn them to the side to the left to the right so you can kind of see how the person would view it in the mirror or somebody that's standing in front of them would view it standing on the side of them would view it standing behind them would view it right so like i said make sure you're using the corner of the blade make sure you're using clip over comb sometimes make sure you skip steps to in order to create transition so you can see it and you can create it better right those are the things that will help you along your process now it's probably kind of tricky to understand it in the beginning but the more you do it you'll understand this method this technique that'll help you out with a lot of other haircuts right so the drop fade is is something a lot of people are doing right now it's a popular haircut you know with the curl top with the sponge top twist top whatever you want to call it right this is a popular haircut right so somebody i'm sure somebody gonna say this ain't drop fade but it definitely is right but anyway so after you do all that you come back and you clean it up you know with your tremors right you clean it up with your tremors still using the corner of the blade kind of because that that first guideline is still you know where we made it that we want to make sure that's completely dissolved right we want to make sure that's clean so I focused on this side. I'm still going to show you the other side. I'm not going to talk through it. I, but I wanted to heavily explain this side, right? Because I want you to be able to see and understand the process. Another thing you can do while you're on this side, like towards the front, sometimes I, I may not fade it perfectly in the front, like where I'm at right now. Once I put the C cup on it, I can see kind of like where I want that fade to sit at, right? So I, you can use the C cup on this side early to see how the fade gonna sit, and, and you'll see what I'm talking about right now. So look at this. Look at what I'm doing now. I can kind of see. I'm putting the C cup on. Uh, everything is kind of looking like it's lining up the way I want it to. Like I said, no enhancements on this haircut, right? So I got my C cup started. I see the blend. I like where it's going. I like how everything's sitting. Everything is faded. To me, it's perfect. I might see this little piece of hair, so I use clip overcome here just to knock that off. But 
you see what I'm saying? Once you put the C cup on, then now you can see a little bit more of the fade. You can see how everything transitioned. And like I said, it's no enhancements on this. And the fade is nice. It's butter. It's blended. You hear me? Holler at me if you hear me in the comments. You did. This side is going to be sped up. I'm going to speed it up. I might cut a little bit. But then I'm going to get to the edge up. I'm going to show you how to do the edge up. Make it kind of crisp without using enhancements. Now we get ready for the edge up, and on the edge up, you just want to comb majority of the hair down or all of it that you can. In order to create a sharp line, you have to get the hair to lay down, right? And especially if you're not going to use enhancements, if you're not going to use hair fiber or, you know, color or something like that, you got to lay the hair down flat. Right? You have to have as much hair to work with as possible in order to create a sharp line. Now, make sure you just look at it from the front. Make sure you can see everything you want to see. Now, you can see where he's thin that in the front, right? You can see that, right? And you want to use your Mr. Outliner, um, your Mr. Outliner detailing mist. If you don't have some, you can go to MrOutliner.com and pick it up. Or you can go to my Instagram page, at Mr. Outliner, and it's in my description box in my bio. Now, start from the middle, right? You want to get a good look at this. Now, you see how I'm able to create a sharp line, right? No enhancement, by just having your trimmer set right, number one, using the detailing mist, number two, and taking your time, like, and combing the hair down in order to have more to work with than not, right? The detailing mist is gonna help you bring the hair down. It's gonna help it stay in place, things like that, right? So those are the things that you wanna concentrate on when, you know, getting, prepping for a lineup and creating a sharp line without enhancements, right? People all, I, I say this probably every every video, I almost cuss right there, right? I say this in every video. Bro, like people know how to, I, I I don't know what other people know how to do. Don't get on my page and say I don't know how to cut hair without enhancement. Don't do it. It's disrespectful to me. I've been cutting for 20 years. You feel me? So I've been cutting before enhancements. If you go back and look at my haircuts 10 years ago, I had sharp lines back then. Period. Right? So this is this is nothing new for me, but when you're transitioning with the times, you do what's in, right? You do what people want you to do. Like if you're a DJ, you don't play music that you like. You play music that everybody else like. So just because I want to hear, if I'm if I'm super old and I want to hear the OJs, 
but you know, I'm in a club full of, you know, 25 year olds, and they want to hear a little baby, the baby, and and all this. Then what am I supposed to do? Right? You play what they want to hear. You don't force nobody to do what you want them to do. Now, of course, I, I'm okay with either way. I'm happy that I can do it either way, right? So don't knock somebody for what they're doing. People do that too much. Hey, if you don't like it, that's fine. That's cool. But everything ain't for everybody, right? Now, for me, though, back to the lineup. Take your time. Start from the front. Start from the middle. Go left. Then go right. Start back from the middle to go to the right. You know what I mean? You might have to go on the other side of the chair. That's fine. To get good balance. Work on the same side that you're working on. Right? Kind of line it up. Make sure you're looking at it. Keep combing it out. Brushing it out. Doing whatever you got to do. Right? To get these sharp lines. Right? And, and that's all we trying to do right here. I, I just, I had to say that. Get that off my chest. But... You know, this is a sharp lineup. It's, it's going to look like this tomorrow and next day and next day till it grow all the way out, right? But you can't tell me that if I was to enhance that part right there in the middle to match the size, that it wouldn't look better. You can't tell me that, right? But I'm okay with it. He's young. His hair's still growing. And it's partially due to the type of hairstyle he has. If he had, like... A low cut with waves like a one and a half on top or something like that that light spot would actually be fuller because his hair is not like laying down and he haven't trained his hair to lay down and because it's curling and going up his thin spots are more um more prominent you can see it right so this is why sometimes you have that right because he's too young to really just be seen so that's not really the issue. The issue is it's just how his hair is trained, right? This is, this is, this is, I dropped a little tip for you right there. You know what I mean? So anyway, this is how you make a sharp line. This is how you do the drop fade, you know what I mean? With the curly top, no enhancements. We, we got them where we want them, right? Anyway, that's the end of the video. Don't forget, like, comment, subscribe. Tell a friend to tell a friend. You know how we do it. Until next time, love, peace, and hair grease. I'm out.